So on your UTI training aid engine, this is our Course 1 three liter engine, you have a lab that requires you to take the engine covers off. This is one of our valve covers here. Now your engine is going to have a bolt in every one of these locations, multiple bolts. For this particular example, we've taken all the bolts out except for a couple. But basically what you're going to do is you're just going to loosen these bolts up. Now the bolts have a rubber grommet in them and they are designed to stay with the valve cover even though we've removed these. Yours will have a rubber grommet. So you will notice we've got the bolts loose now, but the bolts are being retained in the valve cover hole with a rubber grommet. You want to leave these in there. That rubber grommet holds the bolt in there. And of course, yours will have all the bolts, even though we've removed them from this one. Once you get the cover off, that exposes your cam and your valve train. You're going to want to take the valve cover off of both sides in that same manner. Once you get your valve covers off, then we have to look at the front of the engine. The front of your engine has a harmonic balancer or dampener on it with a retaining bolt. Now these dampeners are pressed onto the engine and they have to be pulled off with a special tool. The first thing you want to do is take your dampener bolt out. And you might need a big breaker bar for this because they're in kind of tight. So break it loose. Get your dampener bolt out. Now, these bolts, we have a pad that goes on the front of your engine that we have made up so that you can keep these bolts in, in order. The crank bolt obviously is going to go here. And as we take these bolts out of this front cover here, we need to keep these in order because there's multiple length bolts here. So this one up in the corner, and I've already loosened these ahead of time, is obviously going to go here. And then the bolts just go in the corresponding locations according to this cover. So you want to make sure you keep those organized. The next step is pulling this harmonic balancer or dampener off. This is a harmonic bal balancer puller kit. Your instructor will provide you with one of these. This has to be assembled and the dampener pulled off correctly. Take the three prong piece of the dampener puller and put a hardened threaded shaft into it. You want to screw that in just like that. And go ahead and get that on there. Now very important, there's an end piece that goes in here. You must put this end piece in. It pops in just like that. Make sure that's in there. If you try to pull this off without that, you're going to thread this hardened steel tool into the crankshaft and you're going to wipe the threads out in the front of the crank. So make sure that's in there. There is also a steel pin in your set. The pin goes into the crank hole just like that. Just set it in there. And then we have three bolt holes right here that take a 3 8 fine threaded bolt. So you're going to take your, your puller, you're going to take a washer, and you're just going to put these bolts in. Now you want to, these bolts, they are color coded painted green in your set. You want to run these in at least 10 threads. You want to make sure they get a good bite on that balancer there. So run those in at least 10 threads, and you want to get all three of them in. Now that you've got all three of those in, at least 10 threads, just take and run your puller in by hand till it's snug. You're going to need a 14 millimeter socket on here, and we are going to rotate the tool inward, and that's going to pull the balancer off. So put your 14 millimeter on there, your tool, and just start rotating or turning that crankshaft puller in. As you rotate that tool in, you're going to see the balancer start to separate from the engine. you got to make sure that you catch this because it is going to come off. So they're not on super tight, but they're on too tight to pull off there by hand. So we just run the puller in. You can see we're pulling that off. Once you get that out, the puller takes the balancer off. There's your balancer. Take the pin out. You want to take your puller back apart, take the pieces apart, put it back in your cover and give it back to your instructor. Next, we are going to continue to take our front cover bolts out of the 
the timing cover and get them into our organizer board here. Once you get all the bolts out of this and into the organizer, then you can start getting ready to pull your cover off. Now, one thing I want you to really make sure you understand here, I'm gonna rotate the motor over so you can see. Right here in the bottom of your cover, there are a couple of bolts. Now, one of ours has been taken out already, but you see that bolt that's painted green? There's two bolts here. Those bolts are screwed up into this front cover. If I try to pry this cover off here now, after all the front bolts are off with these bolts in here, I'm gonna crack the cover. So you gotta make sure you take the two front pan bolts out. So I'm gonna re remove these bolts. Now that I've got those two bolts out, now I can take my cover off the front of the engine. So the cover sits on there on a couple of dowel pins to get it off. Just grab it inside up here and, and firmly pull it and that front cover right, comes right off. And that's gonna expose your camshafts and your timing mechanism. There is a, a electronic pulse wheel for the ignition system on the front. Just slide that off, that comes right off. And put these parts in your storage area. Now that we have exposed our timing chains, there is a procedure for taking these chains off. Your toolbox is gonna have a crankshaft rotation socket in it. That socket is gonna go on the end of the crank and it takes a breaker bar and that is how we rotate our engine. Now it's very important on any overhead cam engine that you never rotate the engine backwards. Always go clockwise or forward. Alright folks, so once you get that on there, now this engine is what's known as an interference engine. That means that the valves and the pistons can contact each other in here and cause major engine damage. So before I take the timing chain mechanisms off of this engine, I have to follow the service manual and make sure that these camshafts and the crankshaft are located correctly. So we're gonna to go to the engine disassembly portion of our book, and we're gonna look at what the manufacturer says we need to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this to you, and I'm gonna show you how we do it. I'm just gonna put this up here. So the book says to rotate the crankshaft clockwise to position the crankshaft keyway in the 11 o'clock position, okay? So this is our crankshaft keyway. Our crankshaft has a key on it. Now, to get 11 o'clock, we have to look straight up and down at our engine. So right up here would be 12 o'clock, right in the center, based on this shaft here. So right now, if you look at that keyway, it's not at 11, 11's over here. So I'm past 11. I can't turn this backwards, so I need to go all the way around to 11. So I've, I can see where my keyway is here. It's right here, so I'm gonna rotate this all the way around, and I'm gonna bring my keyway. This is about 12 here, so that's about 11 o'clock right there. Okay, now. Now the, the service manual says to verify that the cam is correctly located. Now we have a couple of marks on this cam here. So if you look, you can see where these holes are in the gears. We also have a mark here. It's a straight line there. Those are our timing marks. The book says that those timing marks are supposed to be at 10 o'clock and two o'clock. They're not. Now, it's important to understand, you guys, there is four strokes in this engine. These cams turn half the speed of the crank. So if these don't line up like they're supposed to, that means that your camshaft a lot of times is 180 out. So I need to go one more turn on my crankshaft and these are gonna go a half a turn. So I need to go around to 11 o'clock again. And let's watch our gears and see what they do. So here I come around to 11. That is 11 o'clock on my keyway right there. Now I want you to note where the gears are. If you look in your service manual here, it tells you that my gears are supposed to be at about 10 o'clock and two o'clock, one or two o'clock. 10 o'clock and one or two right there. So here and here, all right? So now I have verified that the camshafts are correctly located. This right here with this key on this crank at the 11 o'clock position 
is going to put my number one piston here at top dead center. It's at top dead center here. At top dead center, the book says I'm supposed to be at 10 and 2. This tells me that the camshafts are timed correctly in this engine. Okay? All we're doing is we're verifying that the cams are incorrectly. Now, because this is an interference engine, we also have to consider the fact that we may have a valve open here. In order to get this into the neutral position, there is another step in the service manual, right? Right now we've just verified the timing. The next step, if I read in the manual here, it says rotate the engine clockwise 120 degrees to put the keyway at the 3 o'clock position. Remember, I'm at 11 o'clock here, I need to go to 3 o'clock. So I'm going to go and I'm going to turn this until my keyway is at 3 o'clock. Okay, right now my key is at the 3 o'clock position. It's right over there. If I turn the page, it shows me another diagram that tells me where my cams are supposed to be now. It says this one is supposed to be at 12 and this one is supposed to be at 3 and that's exactly where they are. The book says that with my gear at 12 here and 3 here, this is the neutral position for the timing chains and so now I don't have a valve open and the next step in the book says to remove the timing chain tensioner. Since all my valves are closed and I've verified that with my marks, now I can go ahead and take my tensioner and my chain off and I'm not going to smack a piston into a valve. Step. We just take, now we've, we've color coded these, the red bolts that are in the tensioner up here. We're just going to remove those. Now remember this tensioner is under a little bit of spring pressure, so once you get this bolt out it's going to pop back off of there. But that's okay, see how it popped off? No problem. Take the other bolt out. There is your tensioner and your tensioner bolts. You want to set that aside. Now I can slide the outer guide off the pin and I can simply remove the timing chain. The next step is you want to remove the inner chain guide here. So just remove that guide, set it aside. Now I have another chain to contend with here. Now these are both in neutral. I can see that there's no valves open here, right? This at this point is not in neutral. We're gonna, we have another step we have to go to. We have to rotate this again to get this into neutral. So the book says that I need to rotate this crankshaft 600 degrees or one and two thirds turn to locate the camshaft keyway at the 11 o'clock position. So I, what that means is I got to go one full turn back to three o'clock and then I got to keep going back to 11 again. So I'm going to go one full turn, which means I'm at three. I'm going to go all the way around until I get to three again. So there I am. I went one turn and my key is at three o'clock again. Now I'm going to keep going past that one turn and I'm going to bring my key back up to 11 o'clock. Right? So there's 11 o'clock right there. Now we also have a diagram in the book that tells us where these marks should be. Right now I'm at about 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock. Let's see what the book says. Turn the page. The book says that I should be at 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock. 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock. If I keep reading, once these cams are in that position, it tells me to take the other tensioner off and remove the chain. There's your hydraulic tensioner and your bolts. Slide this guide off the pin like we did. Simply remove the timing chain. Now what's cool about this is, this is an interference engine, but since these are in neutral, I can rotate this engine around and I'm not going to have any collisions with the valves because I know that all the valves are closed. That is the procedure for removing the timing chain mechanisms from your 3 liter Ford 101 training aid engine. Okay guys, so your next step is going to be to remove the camshaft caps. Now remember, we have valve springs under here and there's pressure pushing up on these cams. So there is a detorque sequence for these caps 
so that we let the pressure off of those camshafts evenly. If you don't do that, you're gonna, you can bend and damage the cam and cause it to have run out and then you're gonna have to replace it. So the detorque sequence on this Ford is alternates from front to back. You start at the outsides and you work your way in. So I'm gonna start in the front. I'm gonna take these two bolts loose. I'm just gonna break them loose. Once I get those loose, then I'm gonna come back to this one. So I'm going from the outside and I'm alternating to the inside. Then I'm gonna come back to this one. Okay, and then I'm, of course I come to this one and I got all the caps loose. Once I get all the caps loose, you just run the bolts out. Now, these caps are married to their location. They have to go back exactly where they're located. They are machined to that specific location. And if you mix these caps up, you're gonna be in big trouble. It'll wipe the engine out. Well, the nice thing about this engine that we're working on is the factory has marked all these caps for us because every one of them, for example, this is the right head. This cap here says, um, R4 on it, one, two, three, four. This says R1, R2, R3, R4, right? R2, D2, no, I'm just kidding. So we know that this is the right head and this is number one, two, three, four, five starts up here and then six and so forth. The head is also marked and it tells you which side number one and number five starts on. So you don't have to put these caps in any particular order. You can simply take them off remove them and put these in your storage bin. Just like that, you don't have to keep them in order because they are numbered. Okay, so set the caps aside. They were simply gonna take the camshaft out and remove it. Now, we have down here a rocker arm or a follower and a lifter or lash adjuster, same thing. It's a hydraulic lifter that sits in that bore like that and the rocker just rides on top of it. Now these components are wear mated. They absolutely must stay in order and they are not numbered. So we have to store these in an orderly fashion so we know where they came from. If you mix up parts like this that are wear mated, it can cause rapid wear of the engine and also it can cause the valve train to be noisy. In your storage bin, you're gonna have a plastic container like this that allows me to keep all of these parts organized right and when I take this cam out up here the follower here is going to go here and so on so we got these two cams here and then we got the other head the two cams here and we're just going to put these in order so that when we go to put the engine back together we know exactly where these parts came from once you get all of those out for the sake of time I won't do them all get them all out then you put your your storage container aside, it has all your lash adjusters and followers in it. When you go to put it back together, everything is organized.